Hey guys, we're gonna dive into the workflow of ACES for Octane in Blender. We're going to set up the process, we're going to composite it all together in the ACES workflow and show you how that works uh, and why it's such an incredible tool for creative people. Let's give it a shot. the process of bringing aces into octane by first going to the octane render uh, web page and we're going to go to the free trial and what you want to do is get the octane render prime free tier because that gives you access to octane for blender so once you sign that do they have great documentation on how to set that up uh, go ahead and do that run the render server first and then open blender the next thing you're going to need is the ACES OpenColorIO configuration file, and you can find it right here. I'm going to link it uh, down below in the description um, because this right here is going to kind of be the, the key to creating ACES and using ACES and utilizing all of that. Uh, this is a really important file that you have to have. And the last thing to know is uh, to update your drivers to be the most recent um, studio drivers the studio drivers. I believe Octane only uses NVIDIA CUDA and has just recently been trying out uh, Mac stuff, but you need to have um, a dedicated NVIDIA uh, graphics card to make sure that things play really nicely. So go ahead and download that, update that, uh, make sure you're running the most recent version of Octane Render for Blender um, and get this file and you should be good to go. So I'm going to start with looking at this file right here. This is the uh, first file that I have in my ACES workflow. And we're going to go ahead and begin just rendering it um, out of Blender and just to see what it looks like. This is with the Octane uh, render engine. So it takes a second and here we go. Here's the image. This is non ACES. This is just straight, uh, straight out of Octane render. And it looks good, it looks fine, but we don't have that beautiful ACES color space to work with. And I'll show you exactly why that is really important uh, later whenever I go through the compositing of this. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and start the setup process for ACES. So I'm gonna go ahead and send that back to the solid view, and we're gonna go into our preferences. We're gonna go to the Octane Render Engine add-on. And right here, we need to go to the Octane Color Management tab. We're gonna go ahead and check the Use Other Config File, and we're gonna find the OCIO config file that you just downloaded from the GitHub website. So I have mine right here. You do the config.ocio file, and you go ahead and load that. You're gonna change the manual Octane to ACES20651, and we're gonna go into the manual OCIO file, and we're gonna change it to ACES 2065-1. That's what we're gonna want. So that is basically the setup process right there. It is simple, it is easy, it is just like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and render to view. And we're gonna see it looks great. It looks normal, it looks fine. Uh, something that you're going to probably want to do is go ahead and use the camera imager presets so I'm going to enable the Octane camera image, and you can see it changes drastically what has happened. Totally fine, it's normal. Here's what we do. You keep the response time to linear slash off, and this shows you the ACES linear file. This is ACES right here. This is what it looks like raw. We're gonna click neutral response. Don't worry about custom LUTs. We're gonna go down to the OCIO file, and in the view, we're gonna change it to ACES sRGB, and that pops it right back into view. So right now, all we are doing is changing the view inside of the Blender viewport to the ACES sRGB file. And it looks normal, looks good, looks fine. So one last step we get to before sending it out to composite is uh, actually our render settings. So we're gonna go change our file format to OpenEXR multi-layer. I believe none of this actually does anything. And the only actual thing we need to do is the octane output and where to put it. So go ahead and choose your file path. 
don't need a prefix tag, don't need a postfix tag. We just want uh, the EXR multi-layer. I'm gonna set it to 32-bit floating point, uh, PIZ loss li list to be my compression, and then the color space, we want that to be ACES CG. So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. So here we are in my master file that I have for uh, compositing. And all we're gonna do is just focus right here on the beauty pass. Now I do have a denoiser pass for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to denoiser beauty. So R, G, and B. Now we should have a smoother looking file right here. Awesome. But now it looks completely wrong from how we had it in Blender. We had that ACES uh, sRGB look and it's not here anymore. Well, no need to worry about it. It's already in the ACES workspace. You don't have to convert it into the ACES workspace and then back out. It already has the dynamic range data. So let me show you how to use it. There are two options. You can either do it in the viewport right here or you can create your own node. I'm gonna show you both. So I'm gonna go start with this. This right here is your LUT look. And as you can see, I already have my OCIO color space set up. So normally it would just be in Fusion View and then you move it into OCIO. And then what you do is go edit and you go ahead and find that same ACES config file that you set up in Blender. And you link to that one right here in the browse config file. Your source space is ACES. So I think it's actually that one, but I like the look of ACES CG. And then your output space is just going to be output sRGB. And boom, there you go. Now you are still using ACES. If I turn off the viewer LUT, you're still using ACES. It's just in the viewport, you're converting it straight back to sRGB. So now what you can do is you can go into the um, color corrector and you can turn down the gain and you still retain all of that amazing highlight detail. It's still in there. Shockingly, it is all in there. And then you can bring it back up and it has just a really soft and beautiful highlight roll off that you don't get in just regular work. So there's a lot of data there. You can see all the data in the shadow. It's all in there and it's beautiful. And then not only that, you still retain all of that information in your highlights. And that's what's so beautiful about ACES is that you can retain all of that workflow, all of that incredible amounts of color data inside of, of your file. So that is one way to do it. I'm gonna turn off that LUT and I'm gonna show you the second way, which is to do the OCIO color space node and it's essentially the same thing you just find your config file you change your source space to aces cg you change your output space to output srgb and it should pop into place there we go we're back to normal and you can do the same thing in here where you can do your gain and contrast right there and it's still there and it's beautiful it's a little more laggy but it's still there Something to keep in mind um, whenever you do your comping and you uh, are needing to save out a file, if you are to um, stay in the ACES workflow, you're supposed to stay in ACES. When you output, you do not use this node at the end. You can use it as a, as a guide, but when you go ahead and save your files, you do not save it with the converted uh, output sRGB files type. You keep it in this ACES workflow because an editor, a compositor, someone else down the line who um, is still in ACES, this is going to retain the most data, the most information, and that is what you do. Um, another way to do it is to just keep working on uh, with the viewer LUT, do all your adjustments there, and uh, have that work out and and just save it like that do not use the open color io file at the end now if you are the final line and you're uh you're editing everything together in um in srgb or rec 709 that's what you do uh you save with the uh ocio file oh that's the wrong one uh ocio color space file 
you do the open color IO, source space, ACES, output space. Um, you can do either uh, Rec 709, Rec 2020, sRGB. They have all of those files right in here, which is really useful. So it actually converts into the Rec 2020 uh, high dynamic range file that I think Netflix uses. Um, or I can do the Rec 709 and it looks the same. And there you go. So that's a really quick, simple workflow on ACES. Uh, this is done in Fusion because Fusion handles color spaces way better than After Effects. After Effects is a big pain, um, but there it is. This is the Octane ACES workflow uh, in Blender.